Okay, so this is a difference of squares, but now it kind of takes it to another level because there's something that follows up afterwards. And, and I decided to keep this one inside the assignment because later on in, the, in, the, in this class, further in the semester when we start breaking polynomials down, this will kind of come into play and having this in, in your tool bag will be important. So um, same idea, we're looking at perfect squares. Uh, the thing is, is that as we look at x to the fourth, what we realize is that x to the fourth can be broken down as x squared and x squared. So because if you did x, time, x squared times x squared, you would get x to the fourth. And we know that 1 times 1 is 1, so that gives us that part. And then according to the properties of difference of squares, we know that this would be plus and this one would be minus. So that's great. Like, that's fantastic. Like, this one is done. You can't do anything else to this factor. However, this guy right here, because he's actually a difference of squares also. He's got the first term is squared and the second term is squared separated by a minus sign. So this guy can go one step further in that he can be... He can go one step further and that he can be x plus 1, x minus 1. So my final solution for this guy would be x squared plus 1 times x plus 1, x minus 1. And, and I know that's, that's a little bit, um, you know, more there. But like I said, this will be something that we'll be utilizing later on in the class. We move on to the next guy here. Remember, we always look for the greatest common factor first. So we need to take a look at 28 and 175 and see if they have something in common. Um, so an easy one would be 5, but 5 doesn't go into 28. 2 goes into 28, but 2 doesn't go into 175. 3 might go into 175, but 3 doesn't go into 28. So what about 4? So what about 4? So I mean, we know 4 goes into 28. Does 4 go into 175? So we test it. We pull out our calculator. We test. No. Um, five. Uh, no. Five didn't go to 28. Well, seven is the next number that goes into 28. So let's see if seven goes into 175. And sure enough. So that means that I can pull a seven out of this guy and a seven out of this guy. So that would give me seven. Four x to the fourth minus 25. Now the beautiful part about that now is, is that now I have a perfect square there and I have a perfect square, that's a terrible color, and I have a perfect square there separated by a subtraction sign which means that I have a difference of two perfect squares. So I start breaking this guy down. So this becomes 7. I'm getting some I have to finagle this thing. There we go. I get 7. Breaking this guy down. 2x squared. 2x squared. So now 2x squared times 2x squared will give me 4x to the fourth. Plus 5 minus 5. Because 5 times 5 is 25. So now I look at that guy and I'm like, okay, can anything else break down? Uh, the 7, nope. The 2x squared plus 5, nope, because that has a plus sign in the middle. This guy has a minus sign in the middle, so I could think about difference of the squares, of two perfect squares, but the problem is that 2 is not a perfect square, 5 is not a perfect square, so I'm done. All right, so that wraps up our different factoring videos. Remember, use these videos each time to be able to um, work through these problems.